Let me take some of these indicators out. So first and foremost, I'm gonna go over what these indicators is. And you know, this is, you know, all we have is the one that they do have some other stuff that I seen. So this right here is the act of three bar. This right here. We got the strat watch list building. I'm gonna show y'all how that worked it as well and what it's used for. And basically what it does is it's counting, you know, it's cutting down the chart. You know, <clears throat> you um in here too in the settings. My bad, let me go in the settings. You can change it to you know primary list, the secondary list, the territory list, or whatever. You know, Sarah the Strat. You know, SS fifty percent. That's in here as well. Now, fail to up on Verizon. You know, as a strategy, you gonna automatically think. You know. They're just bearish now, more or less. That's what these here is. You know, fail two ups, fail two downs, and what have you. Um, this is a strat. Watch this building. I'm sure, you know, y'all already been trading the strat, so y'all know what a two up, two down is, and what's the inside board. Now, me, myself, personally, y'all know, <clears throat> like on the day of the four hour, I primarily look for Holy Grails and Nirvanas, you know, which y'all know with the um, Holy Grails are the three one um, setups. The Nirvana is the one three setups. Now you can change this here too, you know, to the secondary list and the Ferrari list, which is, you know, the list that I made for the high ATR to take the place. And it'll automatically come up. You know, you just take your choice what you want. You know? Okay. Look, you know, whichever one that you trade the best or that you go to, you know, this is more than likely going to be a 2 1 inside bar, pay a PAC. You know, I'll go to the Ferrari list in a second. <clears throat> you know, SCCI is an inside bar. You know, XLE, you know, which I've been trading, you know, daily, is a two down, two up. You know, that's what. The strap watch is there, so, you know, the three bar, this, this here, I mean, um, this is the Zamunda um, scan. Now you come here, you go to the four hour, which I was searching, you know. As you can see, Google has a holy grail on the four hour. Tesla, Meta, AMD, HD. Now let's go to the tickers. Style. Is this how you start your day more or less? Yep. Well, the night. I like short mine at night. Now you see there's a Nirvana on the day. <clears throat> My Wi-Fi kind of slow, so you bad with me. As y'all see, the holy grails on the four hour as well. <clears throat> so this will be something that I'm gonna pay attention to in the morning. Now, I don't like all this stuff on my charts, so I just go hide it. You know, like when I'm trading no more of <clears throat> I just go hide it. You know. And you go to each and every one. This is how I've been scanning for the four hours, you know. <clears throat> and Drake is the one that I got to make these um, different indicators and stuff like that. You know, stuff that I've, you know, come up with. Some, some of the stuff he has came up with himself as well. You know, and I honestly feel like this more or less gives you an edge in trading. I know a lot of people don't like, you know, indicators, but look here. There's not too many traders that can go on the market daily and say they're going to get a thousand, two thousand dollars a day. You don't need too many setups, to be honest with you. Now, with all these, <clears throat> I go, this is what I do as well. I go set my alerts.
all my work literally is done at night. And guess what? <clears throat> Soon as it trickles, <laughs> sometimes I have different one of them trickle. You know, but it's like I'm also gonna go whenever the market opens, <clears throat> whichever one trigger, I'm gonna take my pick or whatever, whichever one I like. And I'm then I'm going to that five. This is how I catch stuff literally each and every day. Now, of course, this is not in real time. You know, the market is closed. But what I do, honestly, is I watch the strength of that five-minute candle. If it push and keep on pushing, man, I'm taking that thing. And whatever I get out of it, you know, and when I get out of it, I'm shooting for 30 40%. And I know y'all might be like, man, it's not a given. Yeah, you're damn right it's not a given. Excuse my French today. It's not a given. <clears throat> but I'm not trying to hit 100 200%. Sometimes it does. It rarely does. But these are trades that you cannot stay in long, literally. <clears throat> like snow today. Snow, I actually caught because it was double inside. <clears throat> and I, I um scan those double inside boys and, you know, holy grails on the daily and stuff like this. This is not the only way, you know, with these indicators right here. What I also do is go use this strap by. I also will search for the hammers, like on the daily, four hour or two day or whatever. It's, it's always hammers, shooters, like if it's a bearish day. <laughs> if I got a good feeling that it's a bearish day, I search for the shooters as well. And But um, before I do that, what I'll do is go to my sectors. I'm going to show y'all, you know, each and every night, I go and um, chart my sectors the same way that you chart your tickets. Charting your sectors, in my opinion, is the, the very key piece, in my opinion, of, of doing work data. Because you have to know <clears throat> what I, I should maybe um, correct this. I feel like you have to take the strongest sectors and the weakest sectors. Now, in the morning, it may be different. And from doing this ICT and studying this ICT, it may give you a fake out me. You know, and this is why I feel like knowing the strat and ICT you know, as a trader, in my opinion, it's some of the best things you could do. You know, um, not too many people can say that they know both. You know, um, but <clears throat> as a trader, in my opinion, it's, it's very, you know, key to hit consistently, you know, to know manipulation, to know when the market is accumulating, you know, certain tickers or whatever. You know, you can look at certain tickers, some, tickers sometimes and see an AMD or a power three. And of course, you make money in the manipulation day, <laughs> but you also make money on that distribution day. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what this is maybe something I'm gonna take tomorrow. I'm just literally showing y'all how I do my chart each and every night. This one. Wildfire is slow as here. So now see, of course, that's my trigger. This is where I want it to be. They are okay. <clears throat> so this may be bullish and it may not, but it's something you want to pay attention to. What I'll then go do off of ARK, the tip this um, you know, the sector or whatever. What I'll do after that is let me go in my own list. That's right here. And I look for the same or similar type of setup. Now, this <clears throat> setup is a little bit different from the way ARK, you know, um, sector looks like. But 
this looks what like like a what a hammer. And you will take out the house of this right here. And this is something I'm looking at, by the way. The seven cards. Now, if you bullet some more, absolutely, I would take it. You know, I go through each and every one of these sectors. Now, is it tedious? Yes. <clears throat> but it pays, you know, with all this work. XLE, I know personally that it had a fail to down day. So this is something I'll be watching as well. You know, the XLE sector itself, or I, or I trade the sector itself. I tell y'all right now, something I'm looking to swing is um, VLO. Uh, you say you're looking to swing what? VLO. <clears throat> That's Valero. Okay, got gotcha. you. <clears throat> Now, as a swing trader, I'll I'll say this or two, and I'll go further in detail about. So basically, I find the swings at the same exact way. Um, since you you know you um talking about swing trading, but I'll do another um class with you all fairly soon on that. This another sector that. I'm actually looking at as well, XLP. You know, just from sort of doing my <clears throat> rough angle, from just looking at, you know, the charts itself on my phone. XLP, so I know personally, I like Costco and PG out of them sectors. You know, if y'all pay attention to anything I do, you know, I trade a lot of the same ticket over and over. The reason being, because I know the movements, I know the ATR and ADR, you know, um, I'll make this stuff, this is the average daily average, the uh, average average. PG, I know, um, I haven't looked at it yet, but I know it's something that out of um, XLP sector that I like playing and the way it moves. And y'all can see it has the same exact setup of uh, movement, you know, the way the sector looks, you know, oh, XLP. And when you find tickets like that, it's a good chance that it's going to move exactly the same way as the sector itself. Y'all yeah, follow me so far? Yeah, we got you. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. All right, brother. Um, pretty much all I do. Also, what I'll do, like I say, is use that scanner, that that stress, <laughs> that strat by scanner. That's in the this. What is this? Can you turn your um thing off, brother? Please, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. My bad. My bad. So, also, what I'll do, like I, you know, was saying, I'll go in that um strat by scanner tab in the Discord. And I'll search for the same exact setups, you know, on a daily, on a two day, three day, et cetera, on a week, you know, month or whatever. You know, searching for them setups, whichever setup that you like the best from strat, strat wise, that's the ones you, you know, you scan and search. The um, commands of, of that bot is in the Discord as well, is in the um, pin section. So I got a question. Go ahead. How do you determine which um strat setups you like the best? Like when you look at a Holy Grail or a Nirvana, <laughs> you know what determines you know what I'm saying you you feeling like that that one's gonna smack uh, over honestly, another one. Honestly, I think it's just personal preference. You know, for me, I used to trade just inside boards at first, literally, and you know when they had um a scanner called Run Scratch, which was free some years ago when I learned how to trade the strap. And that's, you know, all I knew was two ones. That was before I knew what Holy Grails was. And I was in, you know, a particular Discord and they showed me about the Holy Grails and then it was coined. So, and that's, you know, it was coined, the um, phrase Holy Grail. 
And then I got to two two revs and you know three two revs and you know stuff like that or continuations. I also like the three twos as well. It's just like my personal preference. I know explosive setups. You know, like one of my favorite setups is the um, you know vinyl with an outside hammer. You know, like that VRK dot B setup that I was looking at over the weekend. You know. I just know that those with the right amount of structure and stuff like that, those tend to, you know, go through like two to three price targets, generally speaking. You said it's the Nirvana with the outside hammer that has like a real explosive potential? Yeah. Yes, sir. That's like my favorite setup. You know, um, I think, man, you just got to find your flavor. You know right. what you like and what you don't like. What other questions any of <laughs> any of you all have? So, what are those two lines? The yellow lines. That's not. Oh, that's my bad. That is a banger ass background. Seriously. <laughs> that is some baller shit to put your yourself. Yeah, man, that's your what background. I'm here for right here. <laughs> <laughs> man, how the hell I get the damn thing to back up there? These two bars right here, that's what you're referring to? Yes, sir. <laughs> All it is is that's nothing. I mean, it, well, it is something good. This will be my entry. This will be a talk. This oh, will be okay. A That's all it is. Can you um go over? I I hear you talking a lot about the orb, and I I have no idea what that is. All it is is 15 and 30 minute open the rain breakout. It marks the high and the low. And whichever side it breaks to, that's the one you take it. Oh, okay. That, but you chart that yourself, or do you have like uh something? There's a bunch of them. Um, oh, okay, I see. Right, and I'm gonna actually show it to you. This this right here. So, so R R R by Kia Kimi. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and it also marks like price targets and all that good stuff like out for it. It shows up on any tickers down too. What else you got, Candy? I got a question. Yes, sir. So um you might have answered this. Sorry if I wasn't um one hundred percent present for it, but uh, if you're looking for a setup on a ticker, right? Mm -hmm. Are you paying attention to the uh, bullish or bearish um, uh, the indexes? Like, are you looking? Because I I know you're at NQ checking at out. NQ. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I I absolutely look at NQ and um, yes, you know. And if you're not looking at it, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. Seriously. Would that keep you out of a play? Like, let's say your setup is telling you it like, like PG, let's say it's, um, you know, it's setting up to be bullish in, in according to your setup. If NQ is having a, a sell off kind of day, um, well, this is, you're, you're not, you're not going to jump into this those. One, um, so no, I, I mean, I'll jump into it. It depends on what ticket it is. Like if you notice today, um, 
no, this was yesterday or a few days ago. NVIDIA was bullish as hell, but NQ necessarily wasn't. Sometimes you'll have what's called, I guess you can call them outlier tickers, mm. where, you know, Tesla does it sometimes. When they go on it, it, it it's um, explosive runs where it'll run an entire market is fucking looking like shit, to be honest with you. Gotcha. So that's what I do pay attention to as well. Like tickers that like when the market is down and tickers that it won't necessarily be just extremely bullish, but they have relative strength, you know, and more than likely when the market becomes bullish again, those are the ones that tend to be explosive. Gotcha. And also, as y'all know, you know, um, <clears throat> I be having quite a bit of watch lists, you know, put together and tickers and stuff. But my main focus each and every day is to, you know, uh, have a trade idea and IWN yet. But I'm more more of an ETF trader, SPY, QQQ, XLE, SMH. You no, know, now I may call them out in in the Discord and brutally honest with y'all. If y'all paid attention to the call, like when I'm just calling it out, I'd be like, hey, SMH two up on the day. XLE two two down on the day, DIA or DIE, you know, which is the dial, two down on the day, or you know, something like that. I mean, if people just pay attention to that, a lot of people can make a lot of money very quick. <clears throat> like I'm dead serious. Like <clears throat> a lot of times, um, if y'all notice, um, the guy DJ Allen, I think his name is in the Discord. I don't even call out the strikes all the time, as y'all see. But he knows exactly what to do. He knows how I trade, and he knows just, you know, he's been around for quite a while. So he's, you know, <clears throat> of course, it's coming from a call out, but he knows how to grab his own strike as well. I think another key to this is knowing how tickers move. And even when you're not even trading to you, sometimes it may be, you know, I'm going to say like you and eight, a couple of weeks when it went crazy, you know, went on a 15, 20 dollar win. But you didn't get in it. Man, just watch how it moves. You know, that's the power. You know, watch how it moves on slow days or you know, days like that. You don't even have to trade every day to get better at trading. <laughs> and I think that's what um helped me a lot. You know, I, I take notes of tickers that, you know, other traders that, you know, I guess you can say I admire, you know, um, or look up to. Um and I watch their habits and things of this nature too, as well. They, like Manoli, Desi, you know, and Field of Keys and you know, all these other people. You know, who are not in the Discord, like Kill Killy as well. You know, I don't know if y'all know him, but in my humblest opinion, I feel like he's one of the best traders that I've ever, you know, come across. And, you know, I've had the two privilege of training on him as well and seeing him, you know, do his thing a few years ago. And, you know, people that, you know, that's what I've, you know, taken from them. I've taken bits and pieces from each and every trader, you know, that I like some things that I don't like to add it to what I do personally, you know. Um, and then sometimes it's like, I'll also say this here, sometimes it's just like a feeling, you know, um, of me, you know, I might chart, you know, eight tickets on a watch list. And then I look at early in the morning, something on the Ferrari list, you know, and I just go to it, you know, I trade it, you know, just because I, I don't, I wouldn't even have any goddamn lines or, you know, nothing on there. You know, I know it sounds crazy as hell, but when you know the movie and stuff like that, the tickers, like, if y'all know these people in the Discord, they like, I don't like trading AMD, it's finicky. But that's your problem, nothing against you, but I know how to hear AMD move. I know the way Tesla moves. I know the, the fake outs, you know, shit like that. <clears throat> You know, I'm looking at the candles more than anything, you know, not PNLs or you know, nothing like that. I let the chart start me out. Rarely will you ever hear, say I say, or, um, this trade stop me out. I know my risk tolerance, you know, going in a trade. What's my stop loss? Invalidation points. But I'm getting the fuck out, you know, period. You know, I, don't, I know, you know, that may be controversial because I don't use them stop losses or whatever, but it is what it is. I'm taking the risk. I know the risk and I know my exit plan when I before I enter that trade. You know, that's just always been my mantra. 
that's the that's the biggest thing I wanted to add is you know with ICT or you know whatever strat the biggest thing about getting out of your trades is knowing when the chart is telling you wrong and that that's from a technical standpoint that you have to understand so with ICT it's you know it could be very simple if you make it simple such as like an hmm. invalidation of a fair value gap or you know break a structure whatever it may be you know at that point you understand that you're wrong and you should cut um, yeah. sometimes even before the stop loss, you know, hits like we kind of did today, you know, seeing the price delivery, we cut early because we saw, you know, things were getting a little wonky, uh, ended up impulsing in our favor, but still, you know, we cut because we saw something that we didn't like. And that takes, you know, experience and time and understanding technicals, of course. Manola, you, you recording this too, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Cause I must've, um, I seen the little time thing came up. I thought this was the um, I must have even paid a bill on it or something. But I'm not about to upgrade it with it. Just in case. Right, you know, yeah, you're just good, in case worry. that it does shit off. You're good, you're good. <clears throat> hey Sal, could you talk a little bit about how you use order blocks, breaker blocks, or any other ICT concepts? So I look at order blocks and you know, break a block. I just the only thing I good thing I like about break a blocks to be brutal honest with you is that you know, consider you know, the order blocks is something different that I just started adding to what I do. Um, I don't think it's anything you know that a trader should add to them or more or less. And then again, I don't want to be telling you wrong about it too, though. You know, this. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's not something that you know. I, I guess you can say is like the, the the meat and potatoes of the way I trade. Manola, is well, I'm gonna say Taylor may be a better, you know, question for them. Because uh, <clears throat> Manoli doesn't use it a lot either. I use them more from like an order flow or standpoint, um, rather than like entries and stuff like that. I really don't prefer them as entries. A lot of people do because they provide the best RR, but in my opinion, um, because order block, obviously a move starts with SMT, order block, and then, you know, then you get your fair value gaps and then you get stuff like mm -hmm. that. A lot of people, they love to see order blocks and, be, you know, before they even see a fair value gap, they're slapping an order block, you know, and that's yeah. just not <laughs> my preference. You're setting, yes, yourself it provides... a, you're setting up yourself a fair, you're not. Yeah, it, it just, it's too early. It's too early in a move for me to take a trade i use them in, in a sense of order uh order flow so if i see a previous order block like let's say we're you know in a bullish scenario because we created a manipulation move got smt displacement all that stuff and we have a bearish order block that was old from a previous high once i see that break and retest basically like support and resistance that's when i'm like okay the order flow is you know fully changing you know to a bullish buy program if that makes sense Got it. Thank you. So, uh, I guess how like are, you're primarily a strat trader or ICT or like what's the breakdown? I use both of them, bro. It's not either or. You know, I like the strat setups, but I like the ICT entries more than anything. Sort of like a hybrid type of trader. If I'm making any sense to you, it's like <clears throat> now you can win with strat, and I don't want to you know be like, hey, bump this f the strat or whatever. You know, um, but the way I trade, you can't have one without the, the other, in my opinion. Now, I'm not telling you, you know, that you got to, you know, learn both to be a successful trader. You know, because I know some traders who don't use neither of these. I know traders that just use EMAs. I know some traders that just use trend lines. You know, it's just that, in my opinion, for me to be able to be successful, you know, to have the win rate that I have, I had to learn both of them, you know. Because be being brutally honest with y'all, before I learned ICT, I was not messing with, um, you know, trading the indices. And plenty of y'all have seen me, you know, have, you know, on average, two to $3,000 days from just trading QQQ and SPY. 
You know, I've had six thousand dollar deals. You know, and these just trades or <clears throat> trades that I'm getting in and out in under twelve minutes on average. You know, this is not you know no long day type of trade. These are literal scalps. But in order to do that, for me personally, I had to learn ICT and the strat. <clears throat> Now, is it possible just learning ICT and doing this? Yes. But, <clears throat> you know, now, some ICT traders like Sax, you know, he is learning, you know, the strat now. And he's, you know, he's learning pretty fast. You know, but he's seeing some different things on, you know, on his chart, you know, like these candles and stuff like that. We label ours, you know, and, you know, inside balls, outside balls, two ups, two downs over there. You know, hammer candles and things like that. You know, if a hammer candle is going in force, you know, when you brought in formation, which is one of the three universal truths of the strat, with, you know, the time frame continuity as well. You know. Do that answer your question at all, my brother? Yes, sir. Thank you. No problem. Who else has any other questions? Oh, yeah, quiet in here today. I have another question, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hello? 